Hello and welcome to another Logic Pro X for beginners tutorial. My name is Joe Gautry and I'm a music producer based in London. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some techniques on how to build a production quicker and more efficiently in Logic Pro X. This video is going to include using referencing, instrument and sound stacking to get desired effects, and some little bit of mixing and mastering. So if you're new to music production and you want to learn more, I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button right now because there's a lot more videos like this coming your way in the near future. But anyway, let's get into this video. Okay, so right now what we are looking at is a quick production that I whipped up in Logic. This is an 80s pop influence track. As far as levels go, I'd say this is at a demo level, but as we're beginners in production watching this video hypothetically, hopefully this should be helpful for you. So the first thing I want to talk about is the referencing and what, what is referencing when it comes to building a track. So what referencing is, is finding a song that's already out there similar to the production that you or a client wants to create in this song that you're making for them. Now in this this one I have chosen Elton John and Dua Lipa's Cold Heart sort of 80s disco more modernized pop song and I'm going to try and create something of a similar vibe based off using it as a reference. So as you can see at the top here in Logic this is the song. I'm only going to play it for half a second because of demonetization. One thing this really helped me with was getting the beat down for the song, getting the vibe down. If you're a beginner in Logic, a very easy way to lay drums down quickly is using the drama in Logic. Now how you can get that using this plus button here and then clicking here on drummer and then you can choose your type of genre that you want. I clicked on electronic for this one and this is it here, the big room. So let's have a listen to that. There you go, and that's playing at 120 beats per minute, which is very similar to this song here. Not exactly, because you do want to make it your own. And it's just doing a nice little classic 80s pop disco beat. And just from using this as a referencing balloon, we are on our way. It's not plagiarism, it's not copyright, because you cannot copyright a drum beat. It's not exactly the same as different textures that you can implement, different kicks, different snares to make it your own. But that made it a good start. And as you can see, if we click on it, there are different ways you can mix this up. For the start of the song, I've only used a cymbal. Then if we go to the chorus drums, as you can see, we've got it playing loud and we've got all of the instrumentation in the drums involved to mix it up. So next we go on to the bass. Now to create the bass effect, you're not always gonna find the exact sound that you want in Logic. Now this is where the next technique comes through, which I think will be very helpful for you as a beginner in Logic if you want to try and experiment with sounds, is to layer sounds and textures on top of each other to create something that's different. Now what I mean by that is I started off with this bass called Dirty Planet. Let's play this with the drum kit. Now that sounds great, but there's a lot of things that I pick apart about that which I don't like. The things I like about it firstly is I, I sort of like the crispness and the mid in the mix is very prominent. It sticks out and it's going to make it really good to have this bass line sort of punching through in the mix. So I like that. There's not a lot of low end, low clarity sort of missing from it. So I want it to sort of thump a little bit more as well. So I added firstly a thumb bass, which playing the exact same melody sounds like this. And all of a sudden we've got a lot more low end coming into the bass and that's just by stacking another bass in. But we want to go a step further. I want to have a little bit more of an 80s retro vibe to it. So I wanted some more warm sounding bass. So then I added two more, an 80s FM bass attack and 80s pop bass together. They sound like this. A lot more of that 80s sort of synth pop vibe to it. I wanted to implement that in. And if you play all four together, which are stacked on top of each other and processed together as well, they sound like this. So by doing this, I've sort of got the exact sound that I was going for. Now the track stacking, to get that shortcut, you have to select on the tracks that you want to put into one group and you click Command, Shift, D and now create a track stack. And the reason why it's really good is because you have all four of these going into one track where I then EQ'd them all together. And it gives you even more creative control when molding your bass sound. And then I use this exact same technique when it came to making the pads as well. So we're gonna go and listen to the pads now with the track and I'll show you how I made it.
Now there is a lot going on here. So for the pads, again, I wanted to really create an 80s vibe. I took a lot of inspiration from some 80s songs such as Take On Me by AHA and Dancing On The Ceiling as well. Some really interesting sort of warm 80s pads in there. We've got the synth brass, synth strings, and I wanted to have a little bit of all of it to create the exact sort of pad vibe that I wanted. So what I started with was a dark pad. This is just one of the retro synth presets. And if you're listening with headphones in or out of speakers, I highly recommend you do, by the way, to hear the stereo properly. I also put a chorus on because I want these pads to be in the way. Now, one little trick I'm also going to show you now is using a chorus to create a spread in the mix because we've got the bass and the drums, a lot of it going down the middle. Now, we want something at the sides of the mix. So using a chorus, if you put the intensity on 100, the mix on 100, and then the rate on the smallest you can get it to, what it's going to do is it's going to modulate and split the signal to across. So if I play this in mono, there's a little bit of modulation at the sides, but we can spread this across even more. And then this is with it. Just that little bit of extra bump to the sides in the mix. And I have it on most of my other pads as well to try and keep them out to the sides. And it sort of starts to make an atmosphere in the track if you had your pads out to the side. Your pads and textures are going to be the things that create, again, that atmosphere in the track. So then I've layered that with a bell. Dreamy bells. Now that's doing a little melody. One thing that you've got to really start to do in your productions in the early stages is try and experiment with melodies. Have little melodies going on in the background counteracting the main melody in the song because it starts to make the production tell a story a bit more and have a little bit more development and make it a bit more interesting than just chords. So I've added this little melody just to be a walking melody at the sides of the mix just to make the pattern a little bit more interesting and sound like they're moving a bit more. And it's got a phaser on it as well, just to help with the movement. Then I laid it with another dark pad. This is very aha take on me sounding. And then again, I laid it with analog poly, synth. Sort of got a little bit more of an electric piano sort of vibe to it. I like to have a little bit of attack in the pads and having that sort of synth in there, which is covering the early stages of the sound when you, the first initial sound that you hear. Of course, I've added some synth strings as well. Now, I added these to cover the high end because they were very warm sounding pads. You do want something on the high end again because you want to you use as much of the frequency range as you can to make the song sound as interesting as possible. Otherwise, it's going to sound a little bit bland or uninteresting. You want a song that feels alive. So let's listen to everything we have so far together. And then the last thing I've done is I need a synth melody. So I've used the 70s analog lever. I actually haven't done anything to this other than just add a little bit of reverb on. And this is just, again, all, we're just playing around with Logic stock plugins. So everything I'm doing, you can do here. So I've just created a little melody here to play over the top now. And I've kept that down the middle because we're not having any vocals in this. So because we taken the time to put the pads out wide obviously we've got the bass going down the middle uh, and the drums they are already auto panned a little bit so you don't have to worry too much about that we come up with this And then one last fun thing that I want to talk about is what I did is for the intro, because you always want to try and create building song and make the chorus sound even bigger. So again, what I did with the drums is I've added some fills to all the drums to make it more interesting, which is just this section here. But I've just had the cymbals at the start, so it starts with this. So then again, when it comes to that chorus, you've got that contrast there. So, so it goes from quiet to loud, which makes this chorus sound even bigger. But I've kept the strings in because I kind of like the light, airy feel of it.
The one other thing I added was these uh, the 80s pop bass. Because it was quite mid-heavy, that meant that I felt it was quite tame as something that I could add into the intro and it wouldn't be too intense and take away when the chorus dropped. So we put it all together, this is what we get. And there you go. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial that I did on making a basic production. Again, this isn't the most amazing production in the world, but this is something that I quickly whipped together using some techniques that you can use. If you're a beginner in Logic, I highly recommend that you try to do the things I mentioned in this video, including the referencing, the track stacking and layering sounds on top of each other. So you can really start to make the most of Logic and make sounds your own and make productions your own. And don't forget to think about the whole stereo image and where you want to place things in a mix. But if you enjoyed this video, comment below any other tutorials that you want me to do or any questions that you might have about logic and again hit that subscribe button to see more tutorials and i also will leave my playlist which will pop up here at the end of the video uh, with all my other logic products for beginner videos but yes guys keep making music and i will see you in the next video